Hey everyone, welcome to StarMazer TV. I'm Austin Montville, the game developer of StarMazer, and this is StarMazer.make. We're going to be checking out some development stuff today. So this is a show where once a week we show off, you know, development aspects of it, and I focus on the programming and a bit of the design. Uh, so welcome to the stream. Uh, you'll see we have a slightly different setup here. I've adjusted my view, so not only can you see where I'm clicking, but you can also see if I do hotkeys and whatnot. So you'll be able to follow on a little more closely with uh, uh, my actual actions in here, a request from Bold Big Flank, so hopefully you all appreciate that. Um, currently, I am not able to see the, the chat directly. I think that is that is uh, updating on my other screen, which is over here. So yeah, it looks like I can see uh, chat now. Um, so if that goes in and out, I will hopefully be able to come back. But you can see chat right up here. Uh, so now there's context for the people watching it on YouTube. Um, I'm going to try to pop out this chat so I have this sort of separate window. We'll see if that works. But yeah, um, so today on StarMazer.make we are going to do something. Uh, I don't know exactly what we're going to do yet. We have a couple of options and so I wanted to uh, bring it up with you. Uh, so I'll talk about a couple of updates. Before I do, let's look at what choices we have and then hopefully I will look into the chat to see what it is that you all want to do um, as long as my chat displays correctly. So there's a couple of things that are being worked on right now, um, and what I'm working on directly at the moment in the game is a docking system. So previously, when we were setting up docking events, it was all hand-built with our event system. So every time you wanted to build a dock, you'd have to build up all the sequences of the ships landing and the ships flying out. Uh, for any sort of combinations for it. And although it was robust and allowed you to do any combination of the events, you had to build them all manually. So the docking system takes care of a lot of this in that it provides specific um, points where only animations need to be made. Uh, but every dock sort of has its own system, which coordinates uh, its possible docking bays, uh, the animations of ships flying into, the, into and out of those bays, um, as well as uh, coordinating points at where ships should play their animations for like unloading their docking equipment. Now, I say a docking system, and I've been using analogies to describe such just like... Um, uh, docks like that you uh, would like fly a ship in like in a station, but the docking system is a little bit more robust in that it can handle any sort of landing situation. So even if you're landing on the surface of a planet or crash landing, uh, it still enables that sort of interaction. Um, so yeah, um, we are building this robust system to do that, and I have launching ships working right now. Uh, so we have the ability to go up to a bay, interact with it, and launch. Uh, but we don't have uh, landing sequences done. So that's one of the possible things that we could start coding today. I'm not sure if we'd get it all done within the, the two hours that we're going to spend coding here, uh, but that is a possible thing we could do. So if you are interested in that, that is one of the things you can vote for. Um, the other thing that we can do is we can continue working on the warp drive crackle. So last uh, Star Mazer dot make um, we worked on a weapon together. Uh, it was one that Maximo had concept concepted a, a while back, where we uh, charge up this weapon and have an explosion for it. We now have more up to date assets for it, and also sort of a revised design of exactly how it works. There's a couple there's a couple bits of functionality that we want to be able to add into that, uh, such as after you charge up the weapon, you teleport for a bit, and then you fire the explosion. Um, so we have a lot of the base work for that done, but we could finalize this by putting in the the assets, adding a particle effect to the ship, uh, and sort of just rounding off that. So that's one of the things that we could work on as well. Um, the final thing that we can work on is a bit more of an experiment. Um, so I'm not sure if you're all interested in doing this one. This would be a very different episode of StarMazer.make, but um, I've talked a little bit in the past about our dynamic sh uh, shmup system. This is the system that allows us to spawn enemies in uh, in battle against the player. There was a certain way that I had uh, built this system, but uh, it's not working exactly how I wanted it to to go right now. It's very much that we build these sort of packages of enemies to deal with uh, and send, send them off individually. So that's a way, it, it works like to a certain degree right now and it's okay, but I want to make it a lot better. And this inspiration came from a game that Don and I were playing a few weeks back called Cho Ren Shaw, how we noticed how the enemy patterns were hand designed. And I understood that there's sort of a system behind this that you could actually have an algorithm figure out how to design a level like a person would. So 
we could do some work on the system. Now, this is the most experimental of the, the choices here, mostly because it would be a lot of design work and very little code. We would have to spend a lot of time talking about the system. So it would be a very different experience where I'm sort of going through what my thought process is and figuring out what are the rules for this system and then translating that into possibly pseudocode and then maybe even coding during the stream. So those are three options of what we can work on today. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of time uh, to figure out what uh, you're interested in as well as wait for my uh, chat stream to pop back up. I might have to uh, swing over to see this chat window so you're seeing two chat windows so I can make sure we can uh, I can answer all the questions. Um, but it looks like we don't have any votes at the moment. So think about which one of these three options that you're interested in seeing uh, um, today. Uh, so once again, we can uh, continue doing the, the docking system, uh, which would we would be focusing on landing sequences. So we'd uh, take the Star Wolf and have it uh, encounter a collider during a shmup sequence and then land into a uh, docking bay. Uh, we can work on the Warp Drive Crackle, which is one of the weapons in the game, which uh, has you teleport and fire a blast. And we can work on the Dynamic Shmup system, which would be a lot of design work and sort of figuring out what do you do before you actually write the code. Uh, so I'll wait a little bit, a little while for you guys to figure out that and put in some votes. While we wait about that, um, I'm a little festive today. I'll talk about some updates. Uh, I'm wearing a Gigantic shirt. Uh, Gigantic is a really cool MOBA game made by my buddies at Motiga, um, who I visited today. So I got to see their studio, which is pretty cool. They have this like awesome flat open workspace. Uh, they have a nice like cafe area, and it's in this it's in this area that's actually fairly like I, I live walking distance from from their offices, and it looks like a sort of like Japanese shrine, but it's a it's a tech building. It's super cool. Um, but yeah, they're working on a game right now, and we're actually sort of connected with one of them because one of our mazers uh, is Pyro Insane, who uh, works very closely with, with Motiga. Uh, he does some cool streaming stuff. Uh, he helps them run coordinate events. Uh, so we're all like Corda buddies, I guess. So we all hang out together and, and do things. And uh, we got some lunch with some of, the, some of the developers there that I've been friends with for a, a long time. Uh, one of the other developers at Motiga who I didn't visit today because she was traveling back from London is... Uh, Pepper, uh, who is a streamer. Uh, it's P-H-E-P-P-E-R. Uh, some of you want to check out if you want to see hilarious reactions to uh, awesome recent video games. Um, but yeah, so I am supporting uh, Gigantic today uh, because, I don't know, I hung out with them and they're cool people and they're making a really awesome game that looks absolutely gorgeous. And I bet you all like gorgeous games because you're checking out Star Razor. So you might like their game too. Um, my chat machine is still reloading, so I'm going to go over to here um, to see what we've been, we've been uh, getting here. We've got uh, two votes for docking system, uh, but then servers changed it to warp drive. Uh, we've got Ninja Shroom saying warp drive. I just like the word crackle uh, with Susie Stewart. Hi, hi Susie. Nice to see you. Um, looks like we have uh, two for warp drive, three for docking uh, system. Um, Yes, that is that is correct, Cerberus. Um, so I'll wait a couple more minutes, but it looks like we're going towards the docking system. Um, I can talk about some other interesting things that we've been discussing. Um, one of the things that we're discussing is sort of the uh, the, the playable build that we're working towards right now, uh, and. To not give away story spoilers, but to give away some gameplay spoilers, we're, we're thinking of focusing on uh, this aspect in an asteroid field. Uh, Maximo's been doing a lot of really cool, interesting designs, and despite being our lead artist, uh, he's been getting a lot into gameplay design, which is pretty cool. Because when you work on a small indie team with just a few people, uh, everyone tends to wear multiple hats, like I'm doing design and coding. Which is fine, like I enjoy doing that, a lot of people enjoy doing multiple aspects. But it's really great to have support from Maximo, and he's designing enemies and uh, sequences and getting a feel for the gameplay as well. Uh, it's nice because I can rely on him for that. And so he's got some really interesting enemy sequences. And one of the cool things that we're doing is that in this asteroid field that you're going to be navigating, there's going to be enemies in the background. Now, they aren't attacking you directly, at least not all the time. They are these sort of mining droids. Uh, there's some cool assets for it, which you, you can ask to check out when Maximo does star, uh, draw a mazer. You can see his assets there. But 
what he uh, what he's designed is these creatures that actually fire up these asteroids from the background into where you are, and you're going to be navigating through all these asteroids. He's developed a couple of different asteroids. Um, some of them just float around, and you get, you have the classic thing where you can destroy like the smaller ones, and they'll break into little bits. And that's that's well understood. That's expected in a shmup game. So you, those are the things that you're sort of uh, looking towards. But we have a couple other interesting designs. We're going to have pieces of them moving around. There's these magnetic asteroids that will lock together. Um, we're thinking about possibly having them manipulate the Star Wolf itself as you fly through them. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about that. We're going to have to test that out. But there's also explosive ones uh, that, that will blow up if you get close to them, including enemies as well. So you can actually try to get enemies to go fly to, towards those. Um, and there's also going to be comets in the in the, the section, which may or may not be related to uh, a boss that could be showing up there. So I'm bringing back up my chat service, but I'll have to use my current screen. So we'll look over this. And sweet, it looks like that uh, nothing has changed, so we're going to be working on the docking system today. We've got three votes with this, two for this, and zero for dynamic shot system because no one wants to see designs like the most boring ever. So sweet, this is our winner. We are going to be working on the uh, landing sequence for the dock system. So uh, let's see where we're at right now and what are the things that we have to do. Um, we'll change this into some notes because uh, we'll probably have to take some notes in a little bit. But yeah, so if I boot up the game, let me uh, get a display window where we can actually see everything. I've adjusted my views a little bit so you can see everything that is going on in Unity. But I'm going to have to bring this down to standard one times, or adjust this. We need to pop this out a little bit so we can see the full display view. Um, I'll make sure to show the inspector later on. We can, yeah, we'll do this. Bring all these windows over together. Sweet. Bring this window back. I want to make sure that you guys can sort of see the entire window, but that we should display the game at the right resolution. That should be enough of it. Let me know if you need to any adjustments there to sort of see the, the window. But if we go into the game right now, let's load up one of our scenes. And we're at the hallway exited dock, which is exactly where I want to be. All right, sweet. So we have brick in this little dock, and remember, this is not finalized art assets. These are just the art assets that I've been working on for the moment. Um, this is how our sequence works right now. So we have different bays, which will have uh, numbered bays. Which, uh, it actually is a bay in this example area, but it might not necessarily be a bay. It just might be where a ship has landed. Um, you can use that, and you'll actually walk up, and you'll do a docking sequence. That thing where brick just sort of floated up and put in there, that's because the animator needs to do some animation work I didn't focus on that moment, but basically there's going to be a transition of the door opening up, the character walking in and loading into the Star Wolf. Now what you see here is this is a sort of panel. This is a new sequence that we uh, came up with the idea of uh, not too long ago, in that we're really working on the process of making it feel like you're in control when you do the launch sequence. So this is a very simple one. I have this start button. I click that and it allows me to pick which destination I want to go to. Now uh, you can have multiple destinations that you can go to based off the location that you are in the world. Uh, for now we just have one so we're going to go ahead and select that. It actually loads up the scene behind and then we hit the launch button and we see a little sequence of the ship launching out. And then boom, we are in Shmup Town, and we're going along, and we're flying, and we're shooting enemies, and it's super awesome. So, that's where we're at right now. That is the launch sequence. What we need to do is actually make a docking sequence, so the exact opposite of this. After I fly out here, I want the ability to dock. So, um, to figure out exactly how we're going to do this, there's a couple of steps that we need to do. Uh, first of all, we need uh, the moment to dock. So the way docking is going to work is that while you're flying in the shmup area, we are going to show an area that you can, like, we'll, we'll see this sort of landing thing, and you need to be able to, to move your ship over there. And when you move over your ship, that'll be the docking bay that you land in. Um, we're going to need to eventually add the option to have multiple docking bays and also have those docking bays closed based on other ships being there. Um, if that's the case for that dock. But either way, we need the way to collide, we need the ability to collide with an area of the screen so our, our then we can start the cutscene where we zoom into the ship and we do this generic animation that can bring any ship into the docking bay. Um, so the, the things that we need here is we need uh, to um, make a collider appear when the shmup level ends. Uh, we need to uh, make a trigger 
uh, for when the collider is hit, uh, we will then uh, initiate initiate yeah initiate the um, organization. That's important. Uh, initiate the animation uh, for docking. After that happens, we need to play the actual animation for docking. Um, and then after that docking, uh, after the animation is complete, uh, we need to have the crew come out of the ship. Um, so that's an, uh, another animation. Ship. And then we should have that sequence complete. Now there's going to be a bunch of extra things in here. Uh, but this is a good marker for now to see our progress and sort of have these as, as tasks we want to complete. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to have the shrub level ending uh, and we need to have an event that uh, brings some colliders there. So let's go ahead and get that working. Um, I'm going to go a bit into just actually programming this so I might not respond to everything that's going on. Before I do that, I'm going to get in here and uh, take a look at the, the chat uh, because my my chat computer is not very responding very well so I'll have to actually go to the screen where we can see the chat. Um, let's see here, we've got some people responding to things. Um, yeah, so that HUD that you see, that's absolutely a prototype. That is something that I just made in my free time. That is not going to be anything of what it looks like. Um, it's going to be much more cool, much more cooler than that. Uh, Cerberus is asking for the finished game will take you to a completely different camera angle when you go inside a bay or will it stay outside of it? Uh, it's going to depend on the docking sequence. So the, the system that we're building, this docking system, allows us to do any sort of docking sequence. What we need to change is the animation. So uh, it'll come down to Maximo's decision when we're approaching, a, when we're creating an environment how that sequence is going to happen. Um, so there, there could be aspects of the ship like turning and, and flying off. Um, we could do aspects of the, the camera sort of changing, which would actually just have the background elements uh, adjust towards. So um, generally, we are gonna see a sequence similar to what has been built, but the uh, ability to, for the developer, in this case, Maximo, uh, the artist, to be able to pick what animations play is going to dictate how that really goes down. Um, Sweet. So I'm also going to just try to get this chat thing running so I can see your guys' chat in real time like you can see my chat in real time because that'll be the best. Then we'll be chat buddies seeing things all together. All right. So what we want to do is we want to adjust our shmup sequence right now. We already have a level that we're loading into. Um, that is the Holloway to Treyarch level. So let's go ahead and adjust the timing for this and bring that down. Right now it's set to a 60 second mission length and we want this to go real quick so we're going to bring that down to one. We actually, we should probably launch directly into the shmup as opposed to getting out of here because that will just save us some time. So I'm going to adjust our scene transitioner and we're going to lo load straight into that shmup level. So now we don't go, we shouldn't have to go through the um, the launching sequence every time. The game should jump us straight into this. All right, great, so now we've jumped straight to the level. Uh, we've gone through, a second has passed, and the shmup mission has been completed as we're not getting any more enemies. So now what we need to do is we need to create an event that's gonna bring in some triggers onto, on screen that allows us to land. This is gonna be some, very similar to the landing zone event that we already have, but we're going to uh, modify that. So, well, look at those arrows. I'll clean those up at some point. Um, the first thing I want to do is go find that sequence. So, um, this is the part where I'm going to play some beats and get into making stuff, and I will explain things uh, as as we go along. Um, feel free to listen to your own beats. Unfortunately, I can't play this because, you know, Twitch and whatnot. So, I've got some music coming through here, but I'm sure you've got your own music playing. I'm sure it's fantastic. All right, first thing we need to do is we need to find a landing sequence. Yeah, we'll play with this. This is one of our landing sequences in the game. 
clips. I'm not loading any of those clips. There we go. So I'm not sure it's wide, which you can link into. This one might work. So I'm going to adjust this um, landing event to be the event dock in station. This will be a nice generic event for us to play with. I'm going to look at some examples of things that I've done in the past to see sort of what my approach was. Okay, so this loads up a generic event landing sequence. So we can go about that way, which is really nice. And that's going to trigger probably a message. Let's see what happens here. So we're going to create a new event. Event um, station appears. So this is our event editor, which allows us to visually make sequences. We've talked about this a bit in the past. And we're going to have it when the mission time hits a certain amount. So we got trigger, shmup, what is mission time? Mission time, right there. A new node. So after one second of the shmup mission of going on, we're going to trigger the sequence. And we're going to trigger uh, a subsequence. A subsequence just triggers uh, another event sequence that we've already built. So, and subsequence, place that down. Specifically, the subsequence we want is event landing option east. So that should display a uh, landing zone. So we can actually. I will need this eventually, but I'll need a different event. Sweet, so we have event station appears, loader. So now we need to actually put this event that we just made into here. And let's see if that runs. All right, well, we got ourselves an error, which means it's not loading up the right thing. Uh, okay, event uh, landing option east is inactive, so that means we need to activate it so we can adjust this thing to activate the sequence first. Now, what I want to make sure is that it grabbed the landing sequence uh, that was spawned. Because I don't think it did. Yeah, it's grabbing the actual prefab. We need to grab an instance of it, which means we need to uh, bring that instance into our shmup second section. All right. There's the loader. I need. We have landing option south. I need a landing option east. There we go. Uh, I want these to be in a different order. Order is important on occasion. See, so we have a nice little landing zone there. Um, and this is what we're going to use. Uh, we will have probably something a little bit more specific in the final implementation, something that might show like what um, bays are available. But for now, we're just going to have this one. So now, this will recognize when we actually collide with it, but nothing's happening when we collide with it. So we need to go ahead and get something attached to that trigger. Um, so let's see here. 
The next thing to do, based off our notes, we have the collider up here. See, I already did that part. Now we need to initiate the animation for docking, but we actually need a dock sequence to physically appear. Um, what we should probably do is have it that when we hit that trigger, we then load in the scene for the dock, uh, and we wait for that scene to load. So now we have to go ahead and make an event for when that trigger is hit. Um, I need to go look at exactly where we're indicating that that trigger is hit. Um, we can do that through an event, I'm pretty sure. So let's go ahead and make a test event to uh, link up with this. Let's make a new event. Event, um, land at station. This is going to be a little thing where we actually collide. Let's make a new sequence. We're going to make a trigger. Line. Might have to make something visual for this. We can just use the inspector. Alright, so the collide trigger is what I'm interested in. And I want the collide trigger to be from that object uh, that spawns up, which is the east loader. This one, okay, sweet. So when we collide with this landing option east, we're gonna have an event sequence trigger, and just to test it out and make sure our code's working, we're just gonna do a simple log. I'm doing this a little bit of a one step at a time because it's actually a little more challenging to program when I'm talking with other people. Uh, so we're just gonna make a little thing, and I'm gonna walk through things step by step, not only to make sure I'm keeping all my thoughts in a row, but you can actually see sort of every bit of the, of the process here. Hopefully you find that interesting. So, uh, we collided with the East Collider. Wonderful. We have our little event here. Let's add this event to our shmup sequence. So what we're doing is we're going to drop this in as a prefab. Um, prefabs are great because you can load them uh, dynamically while you run your game, which is exactly what we're going to do. So after station appears, we have land at station. Let's try it out. Still no chat on my chat screen, which is a bummer. I want to hang out with you guys. All right. And we get nothing. So, there's a couple of things that could be happening. We're not actually colliding with this trigger. The trigger isn't recognizing that we're colliding with it. We've got to figure out exactly what's going on. So let's go into our scene. Let's find our event land at station. This is expecting us to hit a specific collider. That collider is indicated here. Okay, so that is actually the collider. If I click that and go here, we can see that this is actually the collider that is in the scene, which is good. If I go over here, it's this collider right here. So I should be hitting this box here, just to make sure. I'm getting close to that. I'm getting plenty close to that. This is when we enter it. It's a box collider. The collision tag is default. I need to make sure that our ship can actually collide with the default collision. So the Star Wolf has a bunch of colliders on its own. We should be looking for the one of these colliders. That's a player. Is the collider? Does the Star Wolf have its own collider? Star Wars has its own collider. It's a shmup environment collider. All right, we have to look at our collision matrix to see what we can and can't collide with. In Unity. We have this physics tab, which indicates um, all the sort of labels that you have. Uh, and these labels indicate what um, layers an object belongs to. Uh, layers are useful for many different purposes, but one of the things is you can indicate what can and can't collide with each other. Uh, it's very nice if you don't want a character to collide with an entire specific type of geometry. And so we have all sorts of different uh, possible collisions here. 
Now, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the default collider of our landing zone is something that our uh, Star Wolf ship can interact with. In this case, uh, our, one of our aspects of our collider, let's see here, let's take a look at all the different things that we have. I think I'm going to adjust this setup slightly. You're going to bring this window down here. I normally am used to working with a slightly higher resolution, so I'll probably adjust this for the next stream. But, alright, so we have our Star Wolf. So this is a shmup environment collider. We have a bullet player. I'm looking at this thing right here. Uh, this is the, the tag that I'm looking at as I go through these game objects. We have a sphere cast, we have a player, a PNC trigger, um, some defaults that don't have colliders. So my guess is that none of these things are something that I can interact with. Let's probably adjust this to something that the shmup environment collider can trigger. That I think is the one that makes the most sense. Um, let me just see the size of it. Yeah, that's that's the size of the ship right there. So this thing would be good if uh, to have it collide with it. So if this is a shmup environment collider, we probably want the other object to be a shmup environment collider. Now it's a physical collider, so it might have an issue with that. But let's try that out. Um, I'm going to unpause the game, we're going to move out of here, and we're going to find that uh, collider. And we're going to adjust your layer to shrimp environment colliders. Let's see if that gives us the result that we want. We're expecting to see something pop up. Still nothing right there, so that's not the sort of trigger that we want. Mm, let us try... I should probably look at that collision matrix that I brought up. That was the entire reason I had brought it up. All right, what things can we debug card with? Debug card with those things. It can collide with player. I'm looking at this line right here. Can't collide with shrub and barrel colliders, so it's not going to collide with that, but it can collide with the player, and that's something we're interested in. Because our Star Wolf has a player section. Yeah, this thing right here. So this has a roger body, it has a collider, it should be able to collide with that trigger. We have to find out exactly why it's not colliding with that. There's a collision protocol, so we can take a look at that. Let's go ahead and log some things out. Before I get into debugging this, I'm going to go check, check out the chat and see what's going on. Um, let's see here. We've got some questions from Cerberus, so let's let's figure this out. Um, what happens if uh, we don't go through the loading zone? And two, I saw last time the loading zone icon was on the ground but not on the wall. Did you change it for a certain reason? Um, so, uh, Cerberus, to answer your questions, um, if the if they don't go through the loading zone, uh, that's going to depend. Certain areas of the game will make it so that you have to go through the loading zone, uh, and that like the level will just keep going until you actually collide with that. Or um, we'll make it so that you can continue past that and go to different sections. The one that you're referencing before, which is when the loading zone is on the ground, that was uh, the sort of option where you could actually get past it. Um, the one on the bottom was an optional place that you can land to. Um, this one, we don't want it to be optional. You have flown to your destination, so we're showing that this is the destination that you need to go to. I guess, realistically, the player could just not collide forever, and they would scroll infinitely. Maybe we want to put something there where just eventually this collider covers the whole screen, and you just collide anyway. Uh, but for now, we'll just put it there, just so you can resolve any enemies or any uh, make it your choice to actually land. We could also do a thing where that fades out too, and then you fly past the station and you keep going. If we build our world in a way where everything's connected, you could actually just keep circling through, which is kind of a cool idea. So thank you for that, Cerberus. I will remember that. All right, let's go in and find out exactly why we're not colliding with this thing. So the first thing to do is just find out what it is that is our issue. We're going to go ahead and just throw out some logs. Fortunately, I already have a log here ready to go. And let's see what's happening with that. So ideally, we're going to get a log when something collides with it. And we'll find out what is and isn't triggering those logs. Because I'm expecting the player collider on the, the ship to actually collide with it. Okay, so we do actually have some uh, collisions happening. 
uh, the contact damage collider and the ship collider shmup, uh, which is good. Those are things that should be doing it. Just to double check, if I go, if I find this ship collider shmup on the Star Wolf, this one, yep, that is the player one. So that is actually colliding as we expected. So fortunately, our collision isn't broken. Um, I thought it was weird that that wasn't doing the thing, but it was doing the thing. So the next thing we got to look at is um, what? Why isn't our event triggering? So, our event is event land at station, and this is supposed to fire a debug log when we go there. Make sure, yeah, there's no log hitting around here. We would see it. This is uh, where the debug logs come up. So this one isn't triggering. The issue is that this event trigger collide isn't done. And I know why. We haven't indicated the object that it actually needs to collide with. We said what it's going to collide with, but this event trigger collide expects actually something in there. My uh, my chat stream computer, it's just, it's not displaying that chat, so I have to keep scrolling over. Alright, let's go back into that event, which is the uh, at station. Let's go into our event editor. Now I need to actually bring this into the hierarchy. Can I just drop in this in? There we go. So we need to indicate a tag. We want the player ship to collide with this. When the player ship is the thing that collides, we will go ahead and trigger that log. So I didn't indicate what I want to collide with the trigger. I just said I want something to collide with the trigger. And it might be nice to make that event so that if I don't indicate something, then anything works. But of course, we might trigger it when that, that enemy ship goes over there. So boop, we hit it. Awesome. We collided with the East Collider. That's great. Now we have. Now we know that we have this uh, collider working. That it pops up, and we can go and we can use that to trigger an event. Now we need to build the thing to trigger the event, which is going to be a bit longer of a process. So to take a look at sort of what's been going on, I have been taking notes on this doc system. Um, hopefully the text isn't too small for you all. These are a bunch of notes on the actual doc system that I've been building. So before I normally dive into coding something, I like to have a strong understanding of what it is that I'm building. This tends to make me save a lot of time. Of course, I, I don't necessarily think of every option uh, when I actually get into the code, but it does help me figure out a lot of things. So we've already done this whole launching sequence, um, and this is sort of step by step all the things that had to happen there. Uh, it looks like just like a screen pops up and you click a couple buttons, but I need to make all those buttons work. In addition, it's not just making those things work directly. I'm building a system that can handle many different scenarios. So I need to break these up into sort of more modular aspects that can handle any sort of ship launching. But we've done all this part. We need the docking part. And I'm guessing I haven't considered everything. Uh, this is already sort of a small section, and I had to end up doing a lot of work to get that docking part work. It's unlikely that we will complete this event for this stream, but let's see how far we can get. So, the first part, ship collides the trigger, we already got that awesome, which is great. Um, this has a bit more specifications here. Um, but this is an important aspect right here. We need to give the ship to the docking system. So when that trigger happens, the docking system needs to know that the collision happened and it needs to grab that. We do have some code for the docking system, so let's open that up right now. It's called the dock manager. This is what actually manages the docks, hence its name. So this has a bunch of different variables in here. These are all very useful. Uh, one of which is we have docked ships. So what we want to do is we want to create a scenario where a colliding trigger will indicate to the dock ships that it's going to uh, grab the thing. Now I just suddenly remembered, um, we need to have the dock in the scene. So before we jump into that docking aspect, I'm going to make, I'm going to finish up this event here. When we collide with the East Collider, we are going to load a scene. Uh, and we want to actually load the uh, Holloway Exeter Dock. Of course, I know that there's going to be a bit of work in here because once I load the Holloway Exeter Dock, it's going to just slap that on the screen. We actually want to load it at a specific location. Um, so we're going to have to create an event for when the dock loads to prepare it in a certain way. I think that's how we're going to approach this. Yeah, we'll try that and see what happens. So let's go to uh, Coding Town.
when you see that music pop up, that means I'm listening to beats now. More, a little more focused on exactly what's going on. So. And my station, we're going to modify this. So we want event land at station. We can get rid of this debug log, we know it's happening. We don't have to load a scene. Load the dock. Great. So I'll go ahead and load that scene. I know we're going to need to position this somewhere. Let's see where we'll need to position it. Realistically, it's going to need to be relative to the camera. But for testing purposes, we'll just get it working for now. So, we're going to do a move to location. I actually want to adjust how this event works, but that's beyond the scope of our coding session today. Uh, it takes direct references to objects, and I don't really want it to work that way. Actually, I could use the tag. Yeah, we're going to grab the doc instead, so we don't have to have a direct reference, which is pretty cool. So it takes tag, so we're going to just grab a doc. And the location, we could do a direct location This needs to be sort of relative to where we are. Yeah, it's better to have this have a game object that we work on. So I'm going to do that. Yeah. I'm going to create a little game object here, and this is going to be a docking position. So we're going to land directly at this docking position. And this needs to be away from where we are. I'm going to move it over. Yeah, I remember the dock is actually something like 4,000 units long. So we're going to put it 4,000 units out in the X. And I think 300 down. Uh, these are numbers that I remember from building the dock the other day. Uh, but basically, uh, this is where we're landing. The dock is this big. I don't want it to appear here. I want it to appear here because we're going to land in the dock like that. We'll have to build something for this to get this information where it places the dock based on the dock itself. Um, we can do that after. We'll get it working in the, the simplest form first. So that's good. Curve, I actually just want this to happen instantly. So that will be fine. Cool. So that'll load up that scene and move the dock. Let's <sighs> yawn, apparently. Let's yawn together. No. Let's go see how this works. Uh, there's going to be a couple of events that happen when the dock first spawns. Um, I'm probably going to have to deal with those. So let's see what happens to the game when we load the dock in. Currently, I've only been loading in this dock uh, directly for testing purposes. I don't have to kill that ship, but I just I do. Sweet. So, we've got our dock popping in, but it didn't pop in the right location. Probably from this no reference exception. So let's go take a look at this. This is having an error on this line, a no reference exception, which means it's looking for something that it can't find. It could be that ship is null. I'm guessing that's the case. Well, so um, you're not familiar with this code, but I am. Uh, this code, what it does is it looks for um, ships that are supposed to be docked at this bay and goes ahead and loads them in. Um, currently it's expecting a Star Wolf to be docked in bay zero. I'm going to just adjust it so that the Star Wolf is not docked in bay zero. To do that, I have to go to our save data. So we actually have some save data in the game, always accessible. Right here, if we look at Holloway Exeter dock bay zero, we see that Star Wolf's in there. We're just gonna adjust that. So now Star Wolf is not. 
No, there's nothing in the bay. All right, so that did a thing, and I think it did what we wanted it to. Yeah, look at that. It moved our dock in. Our dock was placed in the position we wanted to be placed. There was a bit of a pop there. We should clean that up eventually, but we have to clean it up right now. What I am going to do is take a look at questions. All right. So, yeah, I still don't have my um, chat screen displaying. It seems to have not used the internet. So you are going to see me looking at the chat. We are going to look at this chat together. Um, oh, man. Uh... Hey there, I might be Lonk. Um, I I'm so stoked that you are the that you are referencing a great video um, with Lonk. Uh, something you should check out at some point if you haven't seen it. It's absolutely hilarious. Um, we've got lots of conversation going, which is great. Um, and I'm looking for questions specifically. Hey, look, Don's here. Hi, Don. See, uh, I don't see any direct questions. Um, so, we're going to get right back into it. Alright, so now that we have our actual dock popping in, that's great. Now we need to get access to that dock. Um, well, actually, the dock needs access to the collider so it can get information about the ship. I need to consider exactly how I want this to go about. Hmm. We have the collider. We can make an event. Uh, that when you touch a collider, um, it will trigger, it'll look for a dock, and we'll put that information directly into it. I think that's the route we want to go, because then we can use that event sort of anywhere. What do I have right now? That's not the one I want, that's appears. I want the land, event landed station. So, yeah, that just moves it to location because it grabbed the dock, which is fine. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new event that will look for a dock. We can find it because it's tagged dock, and there should only ever be one dock in a scene. Um, we can go ahead and search for that dock, and we can run an event that will find a bay and put the ship in there. It has to be an empty bay. So let's go ahead and build our new event. So event naming things. We'll call it event docket bay. That sounds great. So we've got a fancy new class here. We're going to include it in the namespace of our event system because it's an event. Going to extend event base to give us access to a couple of things, such as the overriding the function perform event, is what actually does a thing. Now, what information do we need? We also need our start condition. So, as soon as the event uh, opens up, we need to actually go ahead and find that doc. So, we're going to have a doc manager here. We need to find it. We have a handy function for that. Find with tag. I know I'm using a I'm using a string boo hiss, but it is fine. We'll clean it up later. So this will go ahead and find a dock when this thing starts. Ah, that's the thing, though. The dock might not exist when this event is created, so we don't want to do that. We want to do this when we perform the event. Now we're doing a search during runtime. We'll probably want to optimize that with an item lookup, but for now, when we're just getting the thing working, uh, we'll do this the direct way. Uh, 
this sort of code doing it in runtime, you wouldn't necessarily want to do that. Um, but don't optimize early. So we have access to our manager. manager I have some function for it. I think we might have to write a function for it. Now we have access to this class. We have access to a doc manager. And what we want to do is we want to find out if a bay is empty. And if it is empty, we want to use that bay. We have all these dot ships. Okay. We don't have anything. So we're going to create a function that gives us. We have a handle docking bay entrance collided. This looks like where a docking sequence can look at that, even common than that. So this is part of the thing that we're going to hook into. I just made this as sort of a filler. What is this tied to? This is tied to an event. We have our docking bay collision reporters. So we already have some collision reporters. that are expecting ships to come in. Oh, those are for the base, though. Yeah. We'll have to make um, the entrance aspects of it. So let's go ahead. I think we're going to return the actual base slot. Um, So we're going to look through our current um, docs, and if there's nothing there, we're going to return that as a bay that's available. What did I call that function? Ah, I need to make it public. Get available bay. That's what we need. So now we have the base slot that we're going to be going into. What we want to do is we want to, the, the way the actual docking animation works is that we have a filler object. It's just a transform out in space. And we already have, a, we're going to have an animation made for that arm moving into the bay. What we need to do is we need to attach the player ship to that arm. So we don't actually animate the player ship, we animate the arm going in. Now, if we look at our dock, I've already made an animation for that. So all we have to do is do the connection between it. It's a little more complicated because we want the we want the, the docking arm to be out in the scene without us seeing the dock. So I'm gonna load up the dock into the scene and take a look at that situation. Make sure the docking arm is out far enough. Oh, we have some sort of compiler, I should probably... Oh, yeah. Return negative one. Uh, in case we don't... Uh, in case no slots are available, I return negative one because I know that's out of range. Mm, okay. Where is my duck? There we go. So here's our doc. Hmm, I can't zoom in very far. So, hold on. there we go. So we have this guy. Here's our landing parent. So this is uh, this is the object that I was talking about. This actually animates um, through this whole landing sequence. If I go into our animation and I do our bay zero land, we can see that it'll actually transfer right directly into that bay. It's beautiful. So what we want to do is we want to make it that when it's out here, over in this area, that we have an animation playing of our ship flying to that place and then the uh, sequence talking. So basically it's the, the ship is getting exactly the position it needs to be to go through these rings. Um, these rings are some, I don't know, they use cool gravity waves to uh, whatever the artist wants to decide. 
So we need to go ahead and attach this. No luck with my check up here. I should use my phone or something. All right. So I think this is something that our doc should do because the doc already has access to this information. But I don't know. I wonder if I want the doc to play the tuning. I, I think it's fine if it does. There's going to be the need to be the transition period of the ship, like where, like if the player's at the bottom of the screen and they hit the collider there, we need to bring it up to exactly where that arm is. Otherwise, if I just attach it, it could like scrape the bottom of these these rings here, and we don't really want that happening. We want it to be in the exact same spot. So we could just run a tween coroutine. We're going to have to do some sort of... We could do a move to location using the events, so then we can have this nice like curve involved in it. I guess I could do that later on anyway. But I think the way I want to have it, we can just do a tween in the code for now. And we'll have the manager trigger that. And we have access to the, the bit in our event, doc at bay. We have the doc, but we need to actually get the thing that collided. So this is expecting... We've already had a trigger play. But we need actually access to the object that we collided with. And we're not passing it through the trigger. So we need to go ahead and find that. See, the thing is, this event needs to be able to handle any sort of docking, not just the player ship. So I can't rely on just, like, grabbing the player ship tag. Um, there could be situations where the AI needs to dock as well. Which means it's harder, we can't really grab, like, a direct reference to what it is that we want to uh, have dock. We need to have anything dock here. So I need a way to pass over that collided object. I'm trying to think of exactly how I want to handle that. The interesting thing about you know, programming is there, there are many ways to do something. Uh, there's many ways to program something, but you've got to figure out the right way for the system in the context of what you're building. Uh, in this case, I want the ability for anything that touches a specific, well, anything that I allow to touch a specific collider uh, to be able to be attached to this game object. That, that arm thing that does the animation, that's sort of a layer of separation. Uh, when I animate the arm, I don't have to animate the ship. Uh, and so that means as long as I attach something like a ship to that arm, we can animate it properly. Uh, there's a couple more bits involved to that. So, I'm trying to think of how this event is going to find out about that. This is sort of actually a limitation of the event system. Uh, they don't tend to pass information between each other. And I think it would be really useful if they did. I don't know if that's something I want to tackle at this moment, because it's sort of a, a bigger infrastructure. But it would be cool if we had this sort of like pool of triggers. And I think the events don't necessarily know about the... Um, yeah, the events don't know about the event um, sequencer, but the sequence knows about all events. And if I expose some variable on each of these, the sequencer could pass it through, and I could always have access to it. That's kind of cool. It's useful, but it's loose. I mean, like, it, I'd have to put limitations on what sort of objects um, I'm going through. I'm going through a lot of things through my mind right now. What I'm thinking is, how do we get it so that when we collide uh, with with our trigger that we can pass that information along. Normally in my events they don't talk to each other. And let me try to show you visually what I'm explaining here. So we have this event land at station. Let's drop that in the scene. So our trigger is for a player ship to collide. Um, which we'll have to adjust that for any ship. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we want any ship to be able to land. But when a player ship collides, um, it starts a sequence. And then it goes ahead and it, it loads and it moves something. But I don't have any way to tell what this got, like to bring that information along to the events. And it would be it would give it a lot of power if I had the ability to use that information. But 
The downside is that uh, the trigger could provide any sort of information, a generic object. Um, in which case I'm not guaranteed what sort of objects or how many objects are in there. I'd have to do some sort of search for that. I'd have to guess and check what they are. Um, it's not super elegant. I've been using our sort of um, player save data a lot to store information like this and, and bring it across events, um, which has been useful. And yeah, that's what I should do again. Um, what we'll do is we'll actually we know the bay is clear, so we can assign that ship to the bay. When we assign that ship specifically to the bay, um, yeah, uh, but it's the event that knows about this. This event still doesn't know that the ship is colliding there. We have to find a way for this event to actually get the information of what did the collision. If we load up the dock before the collision, then it could be the docks colliders out there. And then it would do directly. But that's not necessarily a great way to go about it. Hmm. We do something very similar like send out a generic message, but I don't necessarily like that idea. How do I want to send this information across? So welcome to the part of programming where you do a lot of thinking. You're trying to figure out a, a way to pass information. A lot, of, a lot of programming is just that. You're just passing information along. Once again, there are many ways to pass information, but you sort of want the right way to pass it. Um, I've already built a system uh, a couple times. I've done a few iterations on it, so I'm trying to hone in on to get something that's actually uh, broad-reaching and usable. So I don't want to do this in sort of a sloppy way where we just throw up the reference somewhere. But we're gonna need some way for these guys to communicate. I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting interested in this idea of passing objects through the event sequence. It's gonna be either that, or it's gonna be passing it through the player save data. I don't necessarily have ideas of other ways to go about doing this. At least not right now. Hmm. I like this idea of giving giving the event sequence stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put that in. We're gonna enable triggers to store data, triggers and events to store data uh, that the event sequence can grab and pass between them. So normally when I do perform event, we don't pass any variables. But I think I'm gonna allow us to pass something through perform event. So, event base. I might have to update a bunch of code when I do this. I could also just do, um, I could run another function instead of having to update all of these and give access to this sort of local variable that would store the objects. That might be a better idea. Just because if I modify this, then I have to modify the events for my entire event system, or the, the functions for my entire event system, which I'm not super keen on doing. Yeah. So we're going to have an object list, which is, yeah. Sort event objects. Trigger should have this as well. Now, I'm going to add this to both the triggers as well. They'll all be named the same thing. Right. 
And next we need to go in the event sequence. So what we want, hey look at this, my chat's finally showing up. I'll be able to see your chat in real time as opposed to bumping back and forth. Should be a little nice. What we want to do is we want the ability to grab the events and pass it in to, from a trigger and pass it into each event base and do that every single time. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is we have perform events. Which goes ahead and takes an event ID and performs an event. This is a uh, part of the event system which is actually up on GitHub. I've made quite a few changes to it since then, and I will have to update the source code um, so you have all the functionality that we have. But that'll probably be a little bit later because I keep adding features like this. So what exactly do we want to do is we want to take the objects from the triggers first because the triggers have to fire. We don't necessarily want to get those objects unless the trigger passes. Perform events is what I fire when an event passes, but yeah, and we perform one event at a time. We need a way to get the trigger data. I won't have it until those triggers pass. What we're going to do we're going to have a list. Which is um, So we're going to look at every time we do perform events. Fortunately, it's not in too many locations. It's actually only after this. That's nice. have is the event object list. Let's, I guess we'll do this in a loop. So we're going to add a bunch of object references, which will be super convenient. We have double for loop. All right, now I can see your chat while it happens. This is great. Server assess. Austin, how will the players be able to get a you're landing here no matter what and a you can land here if you want landing zone? Does it matter where they blast off from? Um, it's 
I don't know if that necessarily needs to be indicated. We can do that visually. We can have different types of landing zones that indicate, like, you know, like, end of the line. Um, but it, I think my inclination as a game designer is actually, like, that's one of the things where I want to hide some information. Uh, the reason why I'd like to is because you might think that that's the landing zone. Okay, I go land there. But what if you wait one time, and the landing zone goes away, and you go to an area you've never been before because you've never thought to not land there? Kind of like when you just, you're just you playing a platform and you decide to go left instead of right, and there's this whole other like section of level that you've never seen before? I think there's some interest in discovery there. I think it's an opportunity for us to do that. Um, so I want to do that to a certain degree uh, and try that out. There's also the idea of... I was thinking of possibly doing landing zones where you don't see the strip. I don't, I don't necessarily like that. Um, I'd like the world to recognize that, uh, your observation. So, but yeah, we might just not say it, and that might be an area to explore. Of course, now that I've told you this, and if we actually do implement that in the game, you're going to wait at every single landing zone to see if it still continues on, which I would totally do that in an old game. We want to clear the event object list. I want to do this in a couple of sections, so we don't want to clear it for each trigger, though. Yeah, that's not going to work. All right. Oh, oops, I put that in the wrong spot. I think this is the only place where we need to uh, store objects collected by triggers. I think this is the only place we need to do it in the code. Um, so we're going to start off here and see where that gets us. So when we perform an event, we need to give that event access to these uh, objects. So, So that's going to give our event a reference to it. And then we want to actually add new parameters from this one. And we can let that happen within the event. And we know the event's already going to have access to all those parameters, so we can actually clear it and reset it. That makes it super simple. So what we do here is our event list. Uh, we don't want to clear it here. We want to do it um, from the completed event. Set up event list to pass to the next event. Erase, erase memories of the stream? Why do you... Servers, why do you want to erase your memories? We were having such a great time here together, making the game. 
It's been wonderful. I hope you don't erase those memories. I'll appreciate them. So, an object list. Dot add completed event dots. What did I call that? Uh, stored object events. Yeah. Can I add a whole array? Nah, I have to do it to a loop. Oh, you want to erase your memories so you don't remember the spoilers. Okay, yeah, you should totally get on that. We want this to be the completed event. <laughs> Poor laser kid. Might not be the best results. You can train. There's a kid, if you want to get better at shmups, you should play Cho Renshaw 68k. Uh, it's an amazing game that has a pretty decent ramp. It's still very brutal, but you know if you practice hard, which I believe in you, Laser Kid, you can do it. You can be a great shmupper uh, and just blaze through space with this stuff. It'll be awesome. It'll be super cool. All right, so that's going to add all the objects to the event object list. Then what we need to do is for each of these ones. Uh, Oh, that's going to actually just perform the event, and perform event handles passing it into right there. So yeah, we just had to clear these events and add the completed events events. Now we should be having access to these. Um, we're going to need to test this. I haven't. This is the first time I've written this code, so let's make sure it's working. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to try passing in our collision. So we have a trigger. Collide. I'm actually just like super excited about this piece of code. This is like super powerful. Um, I can't believe I didn't think of this sooner. Uh, it's got issues with it. It's not type safe. Uh, so it's very easy to abuse. Um, I'm going to uh, probably do the root of we're requiring the implementer to be type safe, which means whoever's writing the event, which is still me. Um, but if you're on a team, it would you'd be delegating whatever it's fine, programming, whatever. Um, so handle collided. We have this thing. We have an on trigger event. We are going to override our on trigger event because we should have. Well, I guess no. I don't want to do that because we have this collider thing, and the collider is what I actually want to store. So I'll just do it for each one of these, that's fine. Uh, stored object event stuff. And, uh, we have to make it on the list, because we're using arrays here. Yeah, sure. So we this new objects. We're only expecting one. Ooh, but it already has things. Do I just want to make it a list? It's so much easier. We'll optimize later. I'm going to make it a list. Uh, the difference between lists and arrays, they are both a collection of, of data. Um, but lists can be changed dynamically. Arrays are not built to be changed dynamically. Um, lists can be slightly less efficient. Uh, it takes longer to iterate through them but you can add to them, which is super convenient. So uh, if you're going to be adding and removing things a lot, which we are, you should probably use a list. I would like to optimize that to an array later, but for now, we just want this working. I look over and I see Mega Man X6. You guys are talking good stuff. Hopefully, you too, you YouTube viewers, will appreciate that we have the stream right here, or the, the chat. 
change it to count. You'll notice that you'll see command S all the time on my screen. I I literally like if I type a, if I when I'm done typing, I just save. It's habit. Uh, it's so nice. I wish I had that same problem. For some reason, when I'm painting, I don't care, uh, and I never save. Uh, it's just the way it's the way it works. Stored. Add. All right. Now we are storing that object. All right. So to test this, we're going to just look at some debug values as we play through the game. Uh, hierarchy. I don't need any of this stuff. We already have the event triggering for that. We already loads the scene. That's fine. Let's get rid of these and let's play our scene. As we load up, you can see uh, what sort of thing is going on in chat. Oh man. Someone quoted Miyamoto. Thank you. Do I have an error? What's going on? Oh, look at all these build errors. I gotta fix this. Look at that. I'm not even. I'm not even paying attention to the code I'm writing. This is terrible. Event triggers. I stored objects. Oh. Are you complaining about? Expecting an object. Oh, there are different kinds of objects. Jeez. Oh, There's two objects in here, and I think this is the one that I want. This actually isn't an array anymore, so I don't even need to do this part. That might not be safe, but we'll, we'll, we'll worry about that later. Oh, yeah, this is a dock event. I actually have an old dock class. That was from one of the previous docking systems, one that was not quite as robust. I'll deal with that class later. So, I wrote some code, let's see if it works, and if it works, I'll explain it. If not, I'll fix it, and then I'll explain it. Look at that. Got some no references. Stored object events. I did not initialize those lists. I should do that. Look at that. This is a null reference there.
There we go. That's better. Did I type something wrong? Okay. Too fast the command S in. Alright, so, what are we looking for? Not that explosion. Um, we are looking to see if an object in our hierarchy, an event, carries a stored object. So we have event land at station. If I open up the debugger, right? All right, so we have this new stored event objects thing that's popped in all of these. What I'm expecting is this stored event object on our sugar collide, I'm expecting the ship to pop up right here, this area right here. So let's see if that happens. Hey, look at that. Uh, it grabbed a couple of things. It grabbed both the things we collided with. Um, I'm kind of only keen at grabbing one of them, but hey. At least we have the objects. So now that we have those objects, um, we need to now use those objects. So sweet, our code worked. Um, as I said, uh, what our function does is this is the event trigger collide. If we look at our event editor, um, this thing right here on the side is visually represented by this cool window right here. What this does is this looks for us to collide with uh, an event trigger, a certain object. I'm saying player ship. I'm going to need to broaden that later, but for now, when a player ship collides, we are going to go ahead and trigger this event sequence. Now, what's great is this now has uh, the sort of event objects, and because of that, we're actually giving that to the uh, sequence. I, it seems it hasn't passed through it yet, so i got to go figure that out. Maybe it's because we're clearing it and passing it. But those stored event objects, hmm, I'm not quite done yet. These things should have access to the, the stored objects, but they don't have it. I expect these uh, stored event objects, the, the colliders, to get passed through the load scene and the move to location, uh, because then I can use those in the future events. Um, it's sort of weird though when I'm thinking about the actual coding paradigm of that, just because like those events can request that there be something there, but they might not necessarily be there. I'm not thinking that this this flow is not what we want, uh, because the events shouldn't really know about other things, the other events. But if I'm passing something through and they're going to parse through it, they're going to need to know that something's there. I mean, it's an alternate version of the event, or I could write a specific event that is requesting these information, that this information is there. Because ultimately what we're doing is we're trying to tell the dock that we collided with something. Mm. I think I'm stepping back on this, this idea of the stored event objects. It sort of breaks the idea of our event system, in that the events are there is these self-contained experiences. I don't really want that. Well, sorry, I want them to be self-contained. This stored event objects that passes them through removes that. Because then events need to check for these objects, which means they need to know that something outside of themselves exists. And that's sort of beyond their scope. I should make an event that knows about a collider and can do this, but the event needs to do that. It could check for a collision on stay, the event could have its own collider that's watching for these sorts of collisions. 
The trigger does its own thing, which lets us know that the player moved there. But the event is also waiting for any sort of collisions, and the event gets that information. That's kind of a much cleaner way of doing it. I think that's the way I want to do it. Um, I saw a question flow up on the stream. Uh, Turtle Spence asked if I like Miyamoto. Yes, Miyamoto is super inspirational. Um, I, I like the way he builds games, or at least the way he did build games. Um, the, the concept of the playroom, the concept of uh, completely flipping an entire game concept, even if you're at the end of development, uh, to make sure you release a good game, uh, that's, that's a, a passion that I appreciate, even if it's reckless. So, I don't like this stored event objects thing. Uh, I'm going to trash it. It's not what we want. It requires us passing information to objects that shouldn't really know about each other. Um, it's not it's not good design. So we're going to get rid of all that work. But it's fine, we learned something along the way. So we're going to take a different approach. We're going to create our event docket bay, and this is going to have We could have a collision reporter. Yeah. Yes. A collision reporter is a handy little class that I made to do exactly what it says. It reports collisions. So we're going to have a nice little function here. make sure to clean up this thing. Uh, if you don't clean this up, you get memory leaks. They suck. So, we now have a handle collided, which sends an object. Um, does the reporter store that object? I think it does in the event args. Yeah, it sends a collider arg. So let's parse that. So we now have access to, oh, ideally, the ship. Uh, ship state manager is a class that's attached to all ships. to get the parent of the object that collides. Let's try this out first. So when we have a collision there, we'll have a ship manager. And that's great, because then we have the manager, the dock, and we wanted to do dot doc ship. We want to pass it the ship manager. So now I need to write a function for our doc manager, which is doc ship. Hmm.
just in case we get another ship. Well, I guess it's fine, but I don't really need to do anything. This we want to actually play the function of the animation. So let's see here. Now we have a uh, transform to parent assigned for the crew boarding clamp, dock ship factories, bay launch parents. So I think we have a dock launch parent, the bay dock parents. Yeah, like that. So this is us actually attaching that ship to the arm that animates. Which is super cool. And then, play animation, which is um, bay dock animations, bay slot, That's a coroutine, I think, yep. Yeah. Okay, so that will go ahead and play the sequence. Um, we'll then need to follow up to that. <sighs> yeah, we'll do... Eight, eight, zero... Seven, the dock animations. We'll get the animation that's that's uh, playing when it's completed. We need to compare them. I could use like a dictionary to do a direct lookup or something, but that would cost me some memory in the garbage collector. Um, maybe we'll do it later. We'll decide. I always feel like I have to explain why I'm doing mot and mot not necessarily the most optimized code in the world. Um, mostly because I don't want to optimize it, and this is what's natural for me. For now, yay, the ship has docked in day. We'll deal with that. Oh man, there's just I just look over the chat, the chat up here, and people are talking about Jekka and Rainio and Shenmu, game, Dreamcast games, Tomba. It's just a bunch of classic games. These are like the games I grew up on. Um, it's pretty awesome. Well, I didn't grow up on Jet Grind Radio. I was introduced to it recently, but Shenmu and Sonic Adventure, I know that stuff. I had a Dreamcast, I was a Dreamcast kid. All right, so we have our doc ship function. It's called by this event. It all hinges on this uh, collided thing, but I think I need more of a qualifier for this because this collided event has to happen before we perform the event. But the event's just going to happen. It's like we're putting a trigger in. You know. Well, it's just going to happen with whatever ship manager we have. I should probably label the stock manager. We've got two managers going on in here. I mean, if it's null, it'll just try to dock the null ship, which is fine. I mean, but then I have to fix that issue. Yeah. Okay. Let's give this a shot. Ideally, the collision happens before the event gets sequenced. So it should be fine. I think so. Uh, there's still one thing we have to do. Um, we have to do that tween. Um, we'll deal with that later. Let's see if this is working first. The tween is a cleanup thing. 
Apparently, I wrote something incorrectly. I got a bracket. Uh, Cerberus asked me, what's my favorite game system? Man, I never thought about that. Um, uh, favorite game system. I think it's I think it's just SNES. Like, there's just so many classics on it. PS2 is pretty good though. But I I think I spend the most amount of time playing SNES games. So yeah, didn't have one growing up. I was a Sega Genesis kid. Uh, but it was it's a good console. I borrowed uh, SNES, so like my friend had one for a little while. He had all terrible games though. I didn't play the great the great games until I was introduced to emulators. Uh, so I guess maybe my favorite uh, system is uh, ZSNES. I think that's actually my favorite game console. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's throw this event and see what happens. So we've got a brand new event, event dock at bay. So that's cool. That event that we just wrote, it's like in this list now. Uh, these are, all of these events were all like handwritten. These aren't things that like come with Unity. This is stuff that we built for Star Mazer. Um, this whole event system, like this visual editor that I'm using, right? This, this part, all this stuff comes with Unity. Um, but this visual editor that pops up, this guy, this was built. Uh, it still needs to be made better. So we have an event docket bay. Do we have to put... We don't put any parameters. We don't actually take any parameters. It assumes parameters. So that should be fine. I think. Alright. Let's try it out. See what happens. Alright. Boom. Errors right off the bat. Love it. Let's fix these things. I didn't give it a reporter, so we do actually need to put something in. We need a collision reporter. How do I get that collision reporter? I didn't actually think about this stuff. Hmm. I guess is the thing that we have to expose. We need to give it a collision reporter. It should be the same thing that that triggers. Yeah. Do we have to go with... I mean, we can go with the, the, the trigger. Because this thing has an event collide trigger, which it listens to. A collision reporter is basically the same thing. It's just better at it. Yeah, I should probably convert everything over to collision reporters. Um, so, we're going to serialize this field. Collision reporter. Order. Oops. Doing that backwards. Alright, um, now we need to make a node for this. So I've got this bit of functionality in my event editor. Um, we can just have objects, um, we can have those node windows uh, automatically generated, which is what happens most of the time. So this node window prevent docket bay. Uh, this is automatically generated. You'll notice that I can't actually touch the, the reporter. I need to assign something to that. So we need to make a custom node window so we can get access to that and change the look of this. There's a process for that. We create a new script. Node event uh, dot at bay. Ah, I totally need that. 
and we go over to our code. And we want to dock that there. Fix that. We are in node window. Node windows have a couple of important things. First, they have uh, dock at that. they have a variable that is the actual event, not the node. I don't need a reference to itself. I need to be using the event system for that. Because I don't have access to that. All right. Then we have an overridden initialize function where we get access to the, uh, the thing, the event as um, dot at bang. This function has already been set up to provide me this information. We have another override, which is the draw node content. And this is where we actually get to define the custom window that we're drawing. Um, you might have seen this in previous episodes. We've done this before. So uh, if doc at bay dot metadata details, I want the ability to always go back to that sort of base view. Yeah. So, uh, what we want is docket bay has a reporter, not a renderer, a reporter. Uh, we're going to use the Unity editor to get access to the editor GUI window, or GUI layout object field, which allows us to display a field where we can drag and drop any Unity object. And we are going to name this uh, the reporter. Well, I'll call it collision reporter. Uh, the object is going to be doc at bay dot reporter. Uh, it's type of collision reporter. As collision reporter. Did I do that right? Nope. C. So, when we go back here, it's compiling, loading, and boom, look at that. So now our window is completely different. Maybe you don't remember what it looked like, but it looked very different. Actually, I can show you, it looked like this, and we don't want that. We want this one window to be able to identify a collision reporter. The collision reporter is going to be attached to. Ah, we need to find the collision reporter. We don't have access to it. We know it's going to be the eastern bound one. I think I'm going to have to add a tag in there. Uh, this goes. Yeah, this is an issue with my event system where referencing objects is sort of unwieldy. I should have probably thought about it before we wrote this. I can get it to work though. Yeah, I want like a more generic one for this. Let's get it working first. We'll, for, we'll focus on the docking side. We can embed, uh, edit the event later. Um, where is our uh, east? Do you have a collision reporter? You don't have a collision reporter on you. So I'm going to add one. Let's get rid of debug mode. So that will report whenever this is collided with. Then our event editor for our docking will reference this collider. I'm going to have to do a thing in our event that actually goes and finds it. Uh, you're going to look at me. You're going to watch me write some uh, gross code. It's going to be pretty gross. All right, check this out. At start, we have to. We're going to have a collision reporter list. Hmm. 
this thing that I'm doing right now, it's the thing I need to fix for network, so. Not equal to Yeah, I want to change our event system so we don't have to do this sort of thing. Um, but that's a bigger topic. Rocket Night Adventures. I was talking with someone. Uh, a little while ago that really wants to make a Rocket Knight Adventures game. Um, I can't remember who it was, but someone was really inspired by that game, and so they wanted to bring that. Alright. Let's see if any of this works. Well, we had something happen. So, Let's see if we uh, completed that event. So, we got to event two of land at station. If we look at our hierarchy and we look at land at station, where's land at station? If we look at event two, let's move to location. So it's saying that event two hasn't finished yet. Otherwise, it would have completed. So I think there's something wrong with move to location. I think I know what it is. I had this uh, wrong on move to spline the other day. I wasn't actually calling the event ended. That move completed. Now this like does it. Oh, this is the, uh, not the event though. Event move to location. Event complete, event complete, event complete, handle, event complete. All right, it does do that. Event complete. Let's make sure that's happening. So uh, the, the thing that's not happening is the third event is not triggering. The third event is our whole docking sequence. Um, it's not triggering because the second one isn't completing. Uh, I expect the second event, the move to location, to complete as soon as after we see that flicker of the dock. Um, I expect that to fix it, or to trigger it. So move complete did happen. Oh. I should learn how to read race. Event 2 is event landed station. So it should be performing that. So never mind, we are good. We are performing the thing. Uh, base 0, got to remember, things start at 0. So uh, that means dock ship should be playing. So uh, we are trying to dock ship. Should have done name. Let's see if our ship is null. That's my guess of what's going on. I just I have to take this guy out just every time. Yep. So as expected.